how easy is it for a needle to pass through the petal of a flower? It's so infinitesimal of effort that it is almost, almost like it is effortless. And we are back with another daily reflection on that TDV. The daily Verdantic. And today's reflection is on a phrase that is used often to describe the supreme, to describe reality. Brahman, as is often said in Sanskrit, Brahman means the vast, the infinite. And the way that it is described, the infinite, the vast, the reality, supreme, the truth, all with capital capital letters to begin them all. And language, as a reminder, is just a pointer. But the way that it's described is these two words, imminent and transcendent. Reality is imminent and transcendent. This is certainly not an intro video to Vedanta. This is more on the deep end of the pool side of things. If you want the intro and the encapsulation of nearly the whole philosophy in 15 minutes, you can check out intro uh, to Vedanta, which is the first episode of this podcast. But I'll try to explain in a way where this could be your first episode and still, still take us from the known towards that unknown. Imminent and transcendent. Why is this an interesting and, and powerful phrase when describing the supreme? It's powerful because usually in a dualistic tradition, we think of the supreme or use whatever word you'd like. God is this thing that is not only dualistically apart from us, separate from us, but also nearly infinitely apart from us. 2,000 years ago, it might be described as up in the heavens. Now we no longer think about it metaphorically or literally as in the clouds, but it's still described as this, this world infinitely apart, far, far, far apart from this existence we have here. And reality is apart from at least what this philosophy has said for thousands of years is that reality, that which is, is apart from what we're experiencing here. This is a projection of our minds, a perception, but not a reality, much like the example of the dream that is given so often. So reality transcends where we are, what we are perceiving. The illusion, the projection of our minds, what we're caught up in, the reality of your job transcends what you might perceive as uh, what your boss thinks of you that might not be accurate. We get locked into something, performance review in three days, and we think that that's the whole job comes down to that. And yet your job transcends more than where you are placing your attention. But that's not the whole truth. That is nothing in language ever is, but it also doesn't point in a very helpful way if it just sticks to the truth, reality, supreme, God, it's transcendent. That can be fine in a dualistic philosophy where it just stays up there in the vague, distant heavens. But when it comes to this non dualistic philosophy, where we are called to, participate, discover, realize that reality, then it is also described as imminent and transcendent. Imminent being it's here, just on the other side, just barely, infinitesimally on the other side of where we are right now. As is said, when it comes to enlightenment, something that enlightenment, realization, Turiya, which means the fourth, the fourth state, waking up all of these, all of these terms, 
can make it feel like it is this crazy, huge, grandiose goal pursuit. And the development of the intellect to direct us towards that, it does take, it does take a lot of work. But it's also described as realization is as simple as how easy is it for a needle to pass through the petal of a flower? It's so infinitesimal of effort that it is almost, almost like it is effortless. Sharp enough needle and it just slips right through the tiniest of barriers. Both of these are true and it's a beautiful articulation of reality of quote unquote where it is where it is to be found how to find it the value of it the value of this in comparison all of that encompassed these two words imminent and transcendent that's today's reflection on the Daily Vedantic. We'll see you next time.